moving right along to exercise three. We're just going to start naming type one binary compounds. Now, a type one binary compound is going to be a representative metal with a nonmetal, right? So from groups 1A or 2A, right, the, the main group metals over there. <clears throat> now, this should be a refresher from Gen Chem. So A is cesium and fluorine, but that fluorine is a anion now, so I'm going to say cesium. Fluoride. We have aluminum and then chlorine, but this chlorine has ionized, so I would call this aluminum chloride. We have lithium, and this is hydrogen, but the hydrogen has ionized as a negative charge, even though most of the time we deal with this as a positive charge. Because it's a negative charge. I say hydride, lithium hydride. Now notice I do not have to use any of the prefixes like di, you know, mono, di, tri, uh, because the, this, uh, these contain a positive charge and a negative charge. And for ionic compounds, the algebraic sum of the charges must be zero. And so because Representative metals always form the exact same charge; they never vary. And because the uh, well, all representative elements only form one charge, so that's cesium and fluorine. I just tell you that it's cesium, fluorine. I balance those charges. I don't have to tell you how many there are. I don't have to tell you how many they are. Nor do I have to use a Roman numeral because, like I said, representative metal or representative elements only form one valence state. They don't vary like the transition metals.